Strike King Lure Company, one of the premier lure manufacturers in the world, boasting the most elite pro staff of professional fishermen ever assembled. Woo! From its humble beginnings to becoming known as a major force in the fishing industry, the Strike King brand is one synonymous with success both in tournament wins and with providing the average fisherman with quality lures that are of value for his hard-earned dollar. The amazing story of Strike King started with this. In 1964, McEwen Tackle Company began offering a hand-built spinnerbait based on a design that Bill McEwen had been building since the mid-1950s. That spinnerbait was named a Strike King spinnerbait. You know, the Strike King story is, uh, is quite a story. Uh, 50 years ago, you know, Charles Spence uh, bought the company for just, just a handful of money and actually took the molds and, and everything home in the trunk of his car. One day I said, uh, Charles, you know, uh, Bill McEwen's gonna sell Strike King. He said, really? I said, yeah. What did you want for it? I said, I don't really don't know, but I, I think he'd sell it. If you're, you're interested in buying it. And he said, I think I am. I went in there first. Me and a guy, a good friend of mine, his name is Red Dog. He, he backed out because he, he said, I cannot do that. I can't get away from that. And I just said, well, here, um, I'll just let him have it. He said, go over there with me. I said, all right, I'll go with you. So we went over, we talked to Bill. Charles said, let me think about it. You come up with a price. So we went back, and uh, I was with him the day he bought it. He bought it for a little less than $2,500. And Charles and I walked down that driveway, and I was carrying two molds, uh, two boxes of diaper pins, safety pins, uh, some skirts, and Charles was carrying a big mold, a, a ladle, you know, the hot, hot ladle, you know, the things you melt lead in. And we walked out of there, walked down Bill's driveway, and we put it in, and that's the day Charles bought Strike King Lure Company for less than $2,500. And him and Bill, uh, when he started off, he needed Bill. Just about that time, Charles said, uh, bye, <laughs> why don't you and I get together, and let's, I'm, I'm kind of struggling here with this company, uh, and you're doing good in promotion and everything. Why don't you and I just become partners in Strike King? And I said, let me think about it. I think we could probably do pretty good with it. And he said, I know we could do good with it. So we started, and that's where we came out in this little ratty building he was in that had terrible ventilation. I love that little Strike King sign that he had up on top of the chimney. And uh, I had the promotional vehicle. We put Strike King Lure Company on it, and uh, we started we started together as partners uh, in Strike King Lure Company. He, he, he climbed that ladder pretty fast with Bill's, with Bill's help, really. And I don't, I don't have to say that. Um, nothing against him, but Bill knew more because he was out there more, and, and they all respected him and whatever he said. And it really, it just worked. We uh, continued uh, doing that, and I was starting to fish with, continue to fish tournaments, and Charles wanted to fish tournaments too. And uh, the, uh, he had fished the first BASS tournament, uh, Ray Scott tournament in 67 on Beaver. But he wanted to get with the riders and go on the trips that I was going on. And I said, Charles, somebody's got to run a business. And I was trying to do the promotional end of it and try to help him as much as I could. And I could see where it was hurting Charles' feelings that I was getting all the promotion, all the press, and all the publicity. Charles kind of got, you know, well, he said, he said, you know, he thought he ought to be out there doing that too, you know. I finally, I just said, look, just take it. And you, you, we've got it up and we've got it kind of going. Just take it and run with it and just, and. We parted ways, but we became good, we became friends. We never lost our friendship over it. He got things going pretty good. Bill could help him. And he, 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 he meant that he was a lot of help. Because he was known everywhere, you know. And they asked me would I take that show, and it was sponsored by Strike King. And that really, uh, Charles and I started getting at it again, you know, uh, and became 
really close together again. I was promoting Strike King and I did that through uh, telesports for a long, long period of time. Well, when I started bass fishing, I mean, I've, I've fished my whole life, but when I started getting really into it, 15, 16 years old, man, the bait company was Strike King. A lot of people probably don't know this, but uh, that word Strike King, and a lot of people don't know where the name Strike King came from, but if you take the word bass or striking, and you take the word Strike King, and you'd cut it in half, Strike King, and that's where it, the word came from. When I went there and met Charles, I mean, you want to talk about a character. Um, you know, Strike King was a strong brand at that time, but it was primarily known as a spinnerbait company. When you said the word Strike King, what popped into your mind was spinnerbaits. Charles was one of these guys that would take a, an idea and ram it through the industry. With the unparalleled business savvy of Charles Spence, combined with teaming up with his friend and tackle representative Ray Mursky, Charles led Strike King Lure Company to new heights, turning the fledgling company into a nationally known brand. Charles was very, very driven. He was a guy that, it takes that, he was that entrepreneur that had a goal in his mind that he wanted the company to succeed. And he would push and shove and do everything it, everything it took to make the company work. In 1995, when Charles Spence decided it was time to retire, there was never any question in his mind of who should take the helm of Strike King. He really, really wanted Ray Mursky to own his company. He, he had a great relationship, great partnership with Ray. They had mutual respect, but Charles T. totally loved Ray Mursky. You know, it's not easy to get on this video this morning and smile because I'm not too happy about leaving Strike King Lure Company. I'm happy for the people that's still there at Strike King Lure Company and I'm happy, happy for Ray Mursky and the new leadership that's going to be at Strike King Lure Company. But I'm not really leaving all together. All I'm doing is moving next door to Strike King Productions to enable y'all to get on and carry a Strike King Lure Company to the next level. The Bliss Mursky sales rep agency had been instrumental in Strike King's success in building a national brand. Bliss Mursky owner Ray Mursky purchased the company from Charles Spence and thus began a new era in the Strike King legacy as Ray began to assemble a creative team to move Strike King Lure Company to the next level. When, when Ray came on as, as his, his ownership, he was the guy that said, hey, let's, let's take this lure company to the next level. Ray Mursky was a big reason why I, why I came to the company. Um, you know, I just saw, when I first talked to him, I knew that he was a special person. And Ray's vision for Strike King was to take a company that was primarily known for spinnerbaits. I mean, that's what everybody thought of for Strike King at that time, is a spinnerbait company. And he knew to grow the company, you, we had to expand into markets uh, where we were not at. He was the one that, that kind of forged the way. You know, we started, we come out with a line of crankbaits and the crankbaits got better. Our jigs got better. And we started to expand and, and, and then we started making soft plastics. And Ray was the guy that had the foresight to, uh, to take it to that next level. Realizing that no one understood fishing lures more than those who use them every day for their living, Ray and his team began to assemble an elite pro staff of seasoned tournament anglers to promote and help design Strike King's new offerings. This proved to be one of the keys to the success of the Strike King brand. Ray believed that fishing was much bigger than what most people did. So he said, we gotta have everything. And of course, then you've got people like Kevin Van Dam and you've got, you know, Larry Nixon and George Cochran and Denny Brower. I mean, you're talking the best field staff ever assembled in one spot, Ray Mursky put it together. And the heart of Strike King, and Ray Mursky knew this from day one, is all about the pros, the, the guys that truly know what it takes uh, in a lure to, to really outperform what's in the marketplace. Every year we have a meeting and we get together and we throw all everything on the table. I mean new ideas, colors, changes and this is just part of the process that keeps 
evolving Strike King Lure Company to, to have the best lures out there. In 2002, John Barnes, who worked with Ray Mursky from the day he purchased Strike King, became the new majority owner of the successful lure company. John embraced Ray's vision for Strike King and worked to move the company to yet new heights. You know, when Ray Mursky bought Strike King from Charles Spence, um, you know, he has a lot of other things on his plate to do, so he couldn't run the day-to-day -day operation. So, um, you know, he had John Barnes right there in place to do that. You know, you go from Ray Mursky, who's an icon of the industry, and then it changes hands to John Barnes, and, and, um, and John's taking it to another level. John embraced Ray's vision, and just wants to make it even better. You know, John is quite a bit different than Ray. Ray was a character, I mean, one of the, one of the most special people I've ever met. And, uh, you know, John is a lot different, but John is extremely smart. And John is a really good fisherman. And um, he knew the vision that Ray had in the beginning. And, and that's what John has really done uh, with Strike King is, again, it's all about the people. You know, I, I fished with John a number of times, passionate about fishing. Uh, knows, knows the sport, uh, has, has fished a lot of tournaments himself, and uh, he, has, he has that same vision like Ray did. If you're sitting still, you're really going backwards in the lure company. If you take a personal interest in the product quality and the commitment there, we know we're going to you know, serve our customers the best. And that's, in the end, that's what it's all about. You know, if we can't provide our customers with a lure that they can go out and have confidence in that's better than the other lures when they go to the tackle store on the shelf to pick ours out over theirs, we're not gonna be in business. And, and, and that's what everybody at Strike King gets and it starts at the top with John Barnes. I mean, he's just got that mentality and the philosophy um, that carries down all through the plant, all through you know the sales staff and all the way down, all the way through the pro staff. Not only are their baits the best, their people are the best, the company is the best, and it starts at the top with John Barnes and it goes right on down through all of them because every one of them are more like family than uh, a boss or a coworker or anything like that. And, and that attitude, that family attitude, you're part of this, you know, and let's build this together, that's what makes Strike King special. That's what makes Strike King number one. I've told many people that the best thing about Strike King Lure Company are the people. We make great products and we're proud of those products. We take a lot of pride in them, but the people, the core group of people that we have at Strike King are second to none. And even more than that, we're all fishermen. We all are passionate about fishing. Yes, we're in the fishing business, but this isn't just a job for us. We're passionate about it. When we're not at work, we're, want, we're fishing or we're thinking about fishing. And I truly believe that that separates us from our competition, that we're users, we know what if some, if bait's not working properly, or if we have another idea, we can explain it to each other and understand what we're talking about. So I really think the thing that separates Strike King Lure Company from our competition is the fact that we're all avid fishermen. And it's kind of a key deal, I think, for to help some of the successes at Strike King is, is from the top all the way down at Strike King Lure Company, we're anglers. We're anglers just like y'all. And, uh, you know, we've got a little company, internal mottos, you know, we fish with everything we can and we sell the rest. It's kind of like a, an engine and a transmission. You've got Charles Spence is the first gear. You've got, he's, got, he's the guy that's got that drive and that, and that desire to get that company going. And then you've got Ray Mursky, kind of like the second gear, that is a embellishment of the first gear. He wants to take it farther. He did a great job there but also he knows that he needs some other folks involved in it. And that's where John Barnes got come into play. And John is the third gear, high gear, where you've got a total endless potential. December of 2011 was a dark time for the Strike King family. Strike King and the entire outdoor industry mourned the passing of an icon when Ray Mursky tragically passed away in a car accident in his home state of Texas. This was a challenging time for all involved. One of the toughest days for me um, in the history of Strike King is when I got the news um, that, that Ray had been killed. And 
You want to talk about a, a man that um, that I just have so much respect for. Um, a big reason for, for the success I've had in my career uh, is things that I learned from Ray. I mean, he's like, he's an icon in this industry, in, the, in this sport. I mean, he started fishing bass when Ray Scott started it. Um, you know, he originally got the whole tackle department started up at Walmart. I mean, it, it's such an honor to get to know him. It, it's one of these things that Ray did so much as a rep, as a owner of Strike King, as a friend, and he did so much for kids. He did so much to better the world that we live in. And that's really tough to lose a guy like that because one of the special people out there. You know, there's never gonna be another one like him. And man, I know I sure miss him. I, everybody at Strike King, it was a really, really rough time when Ray passed away. So, he's still the heart of this company. Ray's wife, Mandy Mursky, then became a minority owner in the company. Her husband had helped guide to new heights. She continued to follow the course set by Ray, supporting John Barnes in their quest to make Strike King the most complete fishing lure manufacturer in the world. To sit back and go, what a milestone to go from being a, a local fisherman to work my way into professional fishing and then get to be with the greatest lure company and the greatest pro team and to be associated with that is incredible because Strike King, they make the baits. Owner of the Costa Rican Strike King plant, David Keller oversees a complex process of taking baits from their raw goods stage to a finished packaged product. This process requires a good localized team to maintain efficiency over such a complex operation. Manufacturing quality baits to Strike King's high standards is not an easy or simple process. Strike King's supply chain manager, Charles Herndon, explains. I don't think the average fisherman understands all the steps involved in making a quality crankbait. We start by sourcing components in the U.S. that we then send to Costa Rica for assembly. The first step involved in making a crankbait is to take the body halves and load the internal components, which consist of the, the weights and rattles if the bait gets rattles. Um, we load those into the body half and then chemically weld the two body halves together. After the body halves are assembled together, the next step is to take the, the body halves and sand them to give it a smooth finish prior to painting. After the body is sanded, we leak check it in a pressure chamber. At that point, any of the bodies that sink to the bottom are discarded and any, any bodies that have any signs of moisture inside of them are also discarded. At that point, the bodies are dipped into a solution that then cleans up any of the imperfections in the body and, and clear up the bills for a quality paint job. The, the next step is the base coat, which is the first step of a, a what could be a up to a 20 step paint process. On average, we average about 12 different steps in, in the paint schemes, but they can be up to 20. During the painting process, we use a custom made stencil that gives us a consistent finish from body to body. This process could be up to 20 individual steps to give us that high quality paint scheme that we're looking for. So after the paint has cured, we apply a clear coat, which is a very critical part of the paint process. The clear coat really makes the bait shine and gives it a lifelike appearance. After the clear coat is cured, the baits are sent to the rigging table for rigging with split rings, eyes, and hooks. Each bait is hand tuned in our tuning tank to run straight right out of the package. At that point, the baits are packaged and ready for shipment to your local tackle store. All of our other products follow a, a similar but unique assembly process that give you the quality product that you're looking for. This attention to detail in the bait manufacturing process is just an example of one of the components that has led to the success of the Strike King brand. Always aware of the past, living in the present, and forever looking toward the future, the Strike King brand evolution continues today. Strike King has embraced a new generation of professional fishermen, 
once again assembling an elite group of young gun professionals that provide the company with a new and fresh perspective to the ever-changing sport of fishing. According to branding expert Walter Lander, brands are created in the mind. Building a brand to stand the test of time and to survive in the volatile fishing lure industry for 50 years requires a steadfast pursuit of quality, a finger on the pulse of the sport of fishing, and an uncompromising attitude to provide fishermen with what they need and want at a price that's affordable. No brand has done this better than Strike King. From its humble beginnings as primarily a wire bait company to its growth as a leader in the world of fishing, quality baits with features and function at the best value for a fisherman's dollar. That's the mission statement of Strike King. That's what has built the Strike King brand into one of the most respected lure companies in the world. That's the same mission statement that will carry Strike King into its second half century. XD. And really, if you looked at the 3XD, 5XD, 6XD. Got to catch up to him. I finally got him. Shrinks around that graphite and basically forces the graphite to take the shape of this mandrel. 